this story right here. It says, Pastor hires prostitutes to give them a second chance at life. I thought this was a great story. A pastor serving an African in the African country of um, Burundi uh, recently shared a blog disclosing that he had hired two prostitutes for um, for the night. Simon um, Gilly, Gillybiard, I'm going to call him Pastor G from now on, founder of the Great Lakes um, Outreach, wrote that he had hired two young ladies, Divine and Arlette, ages 21 and 20, 22. The pastor arranged um, to meet the women at a restaurant with the intentions of changing their life. <clears throat> their mechanical smiles broke my heart, uh, Pastor G. wrote in, in his blog. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sat down and introduced myself. I told them how I had wanted to, um, them to have the night off. They could order whatever they wanted to enjoy and have a hot shower and get some um, get a night of deep, deep um, rest. The only rule was they could not solicit it, uh, could not solicit themselves to any hotel guests. I will be back in the morning to pay them after breakfast together, and they could go. The next morning, that's amazing, right there. I just love that. I just love that man. Just, just going out seeking and, and doing things for God in a different way. But let's get back into the story. <clears throat> the next morning, Pastor G met with Divine and Arlette again. After a night of freedom, they seemed more trusting. I said I thought that the um, I thought as little girls they didn't dream to become prostitutes. Something uh, something terrible happened in their life and forced them to make difficult choices. But many things could change if we just wanted if we wanted if we just wanted to, if they wanted them to. Pastor G wrote. The pastor learned that they fell into uh, prostitution as a means to support themselves and their family. They both were orphans and used um, used the sex trade to pay bills, um, pay pay bills and education, pay for the education. I asked them um, their dream, what their dream were. They said that they wanted to run small business or maybe go into marketing. I imagine out loud if they can make good choices from now on, then ten years, who knows? This could be um, they could be running a health business at the market, happily married with a few kids. Divine eyes lit up um, at the thought. Dare she believe? <clears throat> with a question mark. The pastor um, planned to meet with the young women again to arrange counseling and to connect them at the church. At the next meeting, they had skip <clears throat> and they had they had skip in their, they had a script skip in their stride. Pastor G wrote, wrote, we walked, um, we talked more, and we agreed that they should finish um, um, the schooling um, for the year before starting the business. We made a budget to establish what they needed to get out, um, how much money they need to get out of trouble. Divine bust out, no way, Simon, uh, Pastor G. There's nothing, there's no going back. I have hope now. Uh, Pastor G said he hopes to reach more women in the sex trade his experience was not a his experience was not merely a stunt i have i have dreamed of becoming an inspiration to all if we did excuse me if we did um, this in, in the coming years on a on, on a more consistent base um excuse me the pioneer with a story to show other girl will be pioneers to show stories to other girls that it's possible to start for afresh that they've forgotten that they're not forgotten, they're not unloved and abandoned. So that that story right here is out of Christian headlines. I thought this was an amazing story. Just to start it off with the good, I I thought that just just an amazing story, man. Um, to give some context to um, I seen the, I seen the, I seen a video up in um on YouTube. And if I can, um, when I post the um, the the hangout, I'll try to put it on there if I can find a video. But it was talking about how women in Africa, how they go into the sex trade business as they as their number one um, as their number one deal because it's it, that, that's basically the only way they can make money. Um, it's not like America, like like. <laughs> 
it's not where women have the freedom that women have in America, right? They they they, they have to do things a little differently up there. Um, and, and the market is not so much for women to just go out in the market. Most women in their market, they have to start business and it, and it becomes incredible hard. So for them, a lot of time, um, people survive off the sex trade. Um, on the flip side of that is that um, they put the, 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 the governments, they lock them up quick and then they, they lock them up for a while. They just, they, once they get into the, um, to the justice system, the justice system do wrong and, and the justice system basically use them as free sex toys to, to, to get whatever they want free and just put them in jail. So you have jails of women um, who, who, who are controlled by these governmental men. And basically, um, they just use them for sex. And you have about four or five lawyers, right? You got a whole bunch of women in jail. And you have about four or five lawyers who are fighting for these women. And four or five lawyers with, 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 with hundreds of women, obviously, you're not gonna, they're not going to be able to, to kind of like free them all. You know what I mean? Not even all, the majority. Like, they're going to be able to get a very few in. And, and, and this, this um, show... A uh, documentary that I seen documented a few women that that got away. It was like three of them that got out that was able to get out of the system and everything, get out of that right there. But it's hard over there, man. And, uh, and I'm not, and I'm not nowhere agreeing with prostitution. I, listen to me. I'm nowhere agreeing with this. If you know my channel, you know the, you know my character. You know who I am. This is not something that I agree with. But I am very understanding to what they have to go to, and, and it melts my heart that they have to go through this, right? So my thing is this is, okay, we have a problem over there in Africa with this, right? There's a problem. There, there, there is a central problem over here. What can we do? And this one pastor, the reason why I want to highlight this story is this one pastor is correct. Like he's saying, you know what, man? I'm just going to go over two random um, two hookers and say, you know what? I want to buy y'all for the night. But instead of y'all sleeping with me, I want to change your life. <laughs> I, I, I want to change the way you operate. I want to change your world. And I want you to see that Jesus can, can change your life. Uh, my phone go off with a text. And, um, oh, sorry about that. I dropped the mic. <laughs> I'm doing too much right now, but I just, I just thought that 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 this was a, a good story, and we need to pray that more more people, not just men, more people, period, um, go over there, uh, uh, from over there, and start doing, especially outside the church. This this story right here gave a good light unto the church, and I think we need a lot more of this. Um, but if you can find that story right here, in Christian headline news. I just thought that was a great story, man. I just wow, what a story.